Hi, I'm Mike for General Tools. Uh, here we're talking about the brand new face frame jig kit. Uh, comes with a guide bar, extruded aluminum guide bar, which we've mounted to a, an auxiliary table, gives us a nice platform to work on. The kit also includes this clamp mount and a stop lock, both of which slide onto the onto the guide bar, and a, uh, a long square drive bit for driving the pocket hole screws, a stepped drill bit uh, to drill the holes for the pocket screws, and the drill bit has a locking collar with an Allen wrench to adjust the depth. So the clamp mount has uh, keyed nuts that slide onto the guide bar. And uh, as a quick acting clamps. The jig comes with a stop lock, has the same key locking feature, which is useful if you're going to be moving the clamp mount to multiple positions for creating different constructions. But what, what we'll demonstrate is that you can do everything you need without the stop lock by positioning the jig in one place and moving your work pieces under the, uh, the clamp mount. Alright, we've got the jig mounted on the rail, but not locked down. What we're going to do is start by scribing a reference line, a square reference line, on our work table. And then moving the jig approximately in place, we're going to build a rectangular cabinet face frame door. Straightforward operation. We line up our long longitudinal piece, the style, on the reference line. And then we take our rail, our first rail piece, and we line that up square with the with the style on the reference line. Now to set the jig, this jig can be adjusted so that the pocket holes can be, um, can be in installed into smaller boards or wider boards. The reference marks etched into the clamp mount help you align the pocket holes so that they're properly spaced on your workpiece. Now this is a piece of 1x2. Nominal 1x2 is an inch and a half wide. What you want is to have the pocket hole, the pocket holes, approximately equal distant and centered on the wood. So in this case, we've got the, we've made the adjustment using this knob to the three-quarter inch mark. These marks are one eighth of an inch apart, and uh, in this case, we're set up for a piece of one by two. Now, if we were to use a different width piece of work, different work piece we would adjust this wider. In this case I'll adjust it to an inch and one eighth. That mark corresponds to an inch and an eighth. And again, center it on this wood, approximately. I even made a little mark. I don't know if you can see it. That's the center mark. But you don't need that. As long as it's roughly centered. And at this point we have three-eighths of an inch three-eighths of an inch and three-eighths of an inch more or less so this this is centered on this piece of wood and if we have a wider piece of stock we could expand this and adjust to suit. Clamp our jig to the rail so we can loosen the set screw in that reference line in place, tighten the set screw our wood is square to that reference line. The, uh, the two pocket holes are roughly centered on the wood. Just, we have to adjust this for the, uh, the strength of the clamp and lock the pieces of wood in place. Now we're ready to drill our first pocket holes. So we've got the jig basically set up. We're going to loosen the clamp so we can 
put our uh, put our drill bit in place. We want to back this up just a little bit. I'll show you why. Because when we have the when we have the clamp. Move it out of the way so that we can, and the bit should just enter the intersecting piece of wood. So that's about right. That's that's about halfway into the, uh, just for the, the tip of the drill bit, halfway into the piece of wood. I'm going to lock the stop collar. So now we've got the stop collar aligned. I'm going to put our wood back in place. Now that we've got our workpiece is aligned, the pocket hole centered on the workpiece, and the jig clamped in place, the clamp mount in place, we're ready, and the drill bit adjusted to the right depth, we're ready to drill our pocket holes. Bring the drill up to speed. We've mounted our square drive drill bit into a drill driver. General provides square drive self tapping screws. Into the pocket hole, the pre cut pocket hole. All of the pocket hole drilling and driving the screws to attach the, the work pieces is done in one operation without moving the jig. All right, so we've got this piece installed. We're going to install the rail on the other end of this board. If we were going to do an intermediate rail, we would just move it to our, our position and then line up the board. But we're not going to have an intermediate rail here, so we're going to move it all the way down towards the end. Now this one, again, we want a reference on the left side of this face, so we'll be putting, this is just a matter of feeling it, getting this, this piece on, the on our reference line. Got a nice tight joint here. Once again, we're going to have this approximately centered, since the jig is already set up to that reference line, lock it in place. And we're ready to shoot our next pocket holes. All right, with both screws attached, we can now release the jig. And uh, now you have your completed. Spin the frame around, do the other ends. And we're ready to drill. All right, so we've locked it in place. We've spun the, uh, the frame around. I'm going to drill this end. Okay, we're done inserting the screws. Both pocket hole have been drilled. Nice, tight, square joint. Nice and square. Zip, zip, zip. Now we're going to do the final corner. Line our joint up our last piece with the reference line. Lock it in place. Ready to drill our final holes. Completed frame. Nice and square. Now, with a frame like this, there would ordinarily be an insert uh, in a routed groove. We didn't route the groove in this case. We can disassemble the frame easily by taking the screws out, route the grooves, insert our panel, and we're done. It's as easy as that.